I've always been into my music as much as I have my fishing. They've been hobbies of mine for as long as I can remember. I've been lucky enough to travel to many places in my angling, but never before have I been to Hungary and yet I've never fished a lake quite as big as this one. I absolutely loved being a drum and bass MC. It's something that I always wanted to do, but for my angling, that's always been a massive part of my life. Me and Lee have been together for 17 years and he's always been obsessed with fishing. I've always wanted to capture moments in my angling that was more than just a picture, so that is why I ended up starting filming everything that I was doing. I remember the first time I went out filming with my son and he had never seen a carp before and to say he was petrified would be an understatement. This is the first time you've seen a carp, isn't it? Yeah, you're a bit scared. Don't see oh, you want to go and see mummy, do you? Uh, capturing that moment with the sun just sort of blew me away, really. It wasn't obviously about the capture, it was more about my son's reaction. Uh, from that moment on, I've always been obsessed with just filming everything, not only my angling, but family holidays, when we go out with the children anywhere and that's when I've sort of identified myself as a videographer. He's always out filming with our boys or going somewhere that's involved with fishing. To be honest, half the time I don't even know where he is. <laughs> uh, having the opportunities that I've had to go on many epic adventures, there's never quite been one like this. So the first time I saw Lake Balaton, I never even knew that a lake this size even existed. I can't even remember how this trip came about because normally we sort of have a meeting at Fox and you know, things are planned, but I'm sure this was just like an off the cuff thing. And um, I was only told about it maybe a month or two ago. We had a meeting with Harry and he told me that uh, me and Moza have to make a film together. I just have to pick a lake. And I was like, okay, any lake? And he said, yeah, any. And I was like, okay, how about Lake Balaton? Fancy going to Lake Balaton, definitely. What? Well, I'm just loading up for my hungry trip to Lake Balaton. And I've got to somehow get all my kit into that bazooka tube there and that suitcase there. So, four rods, four reels, alarms, all my tackle kit that's in there. I'm going to Tom Maker style it, put them into buckets. So I've got two big spawn buckets, two 17 litre buckets, plus two of the smaller buckets, 10 litres, I think they are. So I've got to get all my kit into there, but there's another issue. There's always a bloody issue. Whenever I go abroad, something happens and the bait hasn't arrived. Uh, damn, right, so it's just one of them things. It's not going to arrive now till Wednesday, so I've got to somehow take enough bait with me. I've only got a 20 kilo allocation, so I've got to get me tackle and my bait somehow over there. So what I'm gonna do is they don't weigh these bazooka tubes apparently, so I'm gonna at least cram in five kilos of bait in the bottom of that tube, which might be a drama of getting it back out, but hey ho, it's one of them. Uh, let's see how we get on. So in the meantime, carnage. We'll see if we get everything into that bazooka tube and a tiny bloody breed suitcase. <laughs> Wish me luck. <laughs> Please go in there. Oh, no. Right, well, that ain't going in there. Next option. I'm sorry, Sean. <laughs> there's a wheel that's away. <laughs> God, I hope they don't think that that's some sort of pipe bomb or something now that there's a load of balls set in the bottom of that. God. Should get me TIs in there now. 
this is absolutely criminal I know but needs must um, so I've got me four rods in here as you can see one two three four and I'll compact them out another five kilos of bait <laughs> Get it there. I'm never going to get away with this, am I? 20 kilo in there. I don't know how I'm going to carry this thing in the airport. In all honesty, it's going to be an absolute nightmare, but that is filled to the brim, as you can see, and it weighs an absolute ton. <laughs> oh, I'm definitely getting arrested. Out of sight, out of mind. Somehow made to get that bloody figure to the airport. Don't quite know how, to be honest. Now I've got the rigmarole getting in there and getting this checked in, but I ain't looking forward to it. That is bloody heavy, let me tell you, proper. But we're here, and it's, well, it left me out at 2 a.m. So let's hope that this isn't as painful as it looks already. Lee has never flown on his own before. He's only flown once, and that was for a Kev Hewitt stag do. Oh, well, managed to get the bazooka tube on the, to the plane. Well, I think we have, even though it's a mere 10 kilos over. <laughs> but I ended up sort of sweet talking the lady that was there that weighed it. She went, oh, it's a little bit over. I was like, oh, she said, what is it? And I was like, oh, it's just like fishing rods and that with lots of packing around them because they're very expensive. She went, oh, it's very cool. What's it say down the side? And then ended up shouting bazooka quite loud, which is not something you want, you want to be shouting in an airport. So I think it's being put on the plane. Let's hope it's being put on the plane because well, I'll be screwed with that, in, basically. So, just sat here now. Bit of rubbish Burger King I've just eaten. It's horrendous. No added sugar, Capri Sun. It's like the worst thing I've ever drunk in my life. It's horrendous. But now waiting for the call for the gate, so. It's all very new to me, this. I've about bit I've only ever flown once before. Here we go. So I was greeted by Christoph at the airport and then we had a two and a half hour journey from the airport to the lake. Okay, so Mozart just texted me that uh, he's got his luggage with him. So uh, I'm rolling straight to the airport to pick him up. I was greeted by Jimmy and he was going to be fishing with me and camp was already set up. Oh. <laughs> Hello mate, you alright? Oh, I am very happy. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> He's got beards as well. <laughs> 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 We had our first drink and then it was time to start thinking about how I was going to tackle Lake Balaton. Now, I might be a little bit out of my depth here, this is 148,000 acres. Yes, you did hear me right. It's 49 miles long, this place. It's the first place I've ever fished in Hungary. So I might have set myself a little challenge here, but to be honest, when you've got a backdrop like this and you've got a beer in your hand and you're at such a wonderful place, then how can you not take this challenge on to be honest with you this is a little bit of me definitely the guys have been sending me photos of the swim photos of the lake i've been in you know sort of trying to gain as much knowledge as i possibly can about the place and all that while you're building up a picture and you're building up the confidence to come and tackle a place like this and i'm just sat here now just thinking there's dreams to be made out there. There literally is 
dreams to be made out there and it only takes that one bite. As anglers, we're always watching the weather app. Now, I had four nights ahead of me. I started on the Monday, and then the app said to me that on Thursday, we were gonna have big wins. So I felt like that was when it was gonna be my opportunity to get a bite. This is the Duncan Rod of Love. Oh my God, I can't believe how shallow it is out here. Good? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's, uh, there's something here. Hard? Uh, yeah, yeah. Hard? Yeah. Hmm? Okay, right, we are a million miles out in the abyss and basically all I'm looking for is a little bit of hardness and like I said earlier on there's like muscle beds out here and that is what everyone fishes to so I've just dragged a lead behind the boat just with like half a rod and then just waited 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 and then it's gone bump 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 like that and basically chucked a h-block over the side and that H block's to the right of the boat now, and all I'm doing is just baiting a large area, but where I'll put the hook bait is exactly where the hard area is. So it's a very small, small hard area. Like I'm out in the abyss, like I've said. So all I'm looking for is something a little bit different out there. And as I've dragged the lead, it's gone bum bum bum, chuck the H block to the right of the H block and baiting all round the H block. But where the kill zone is, is exactly where that hard area is. So all I'm doing now is just baiting that zone. I'm gonna drop the rig where the hard area is, go back to the bank, and hopefully I've got enough braid on the reels. I'm a little bit far out. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Sing us a song. A song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're um. cooking, so you have to sing us a song. <laughs> Come on. You have to sing it now. <laughs> <laughs> there we have it my first hungarian carp not the biggest in the world of course there's quite a few of these smaller ones in balaton but from 148,000 acres you'll take that definitely wicked let's hope it's mothers out there somewhere feeding away This lake is without a doubt one of the biggest challenges, but the bigger the challenge, the better the reward. Beautiful. 
But we just put back that first one. They can only get bigger from now on in, of course. So we are getting back out there. Obviously dropped a halo pole last night, so mark the spot. I would say it's probably about 300, 350 yards out. So we're long our way out into the pond. But yeah, we're just heading out there now. Put a bit more bait back onto that halo marker and get the rod re-dropped. Right, so we're at the pole now. So I am feeding 22 mil SLKs at the minute. <clears throat> I've got some 26 mil SLK that will be turning up later on today at some point. So we'll start feeding them as well because they like their big old baits out here. And all I'm doing is just spreading it to the right of the halo pole. Now the reasons why I like doing it to the right of the pole instead of like in front of the pole is because if you get obviously a big wind on here you can almost dump and run so that's why I like always just feeding out to the right hand side of it so you basically you go past the pole and as you come back round you just dump your rod and then go sort of thing so it can be very difficult if you're um if you're fishing in front of the pole to keep the boat there if you've got a big wind on so just spreading these out probably put about um three to four kilo spread out here just quite a wide area okay I always use the back wind when i when i go so just lay the rig out back wind down boom beautiful Let's go. What are we doing? What's that? Thank you very much for, for you being, being here. Right. <laughs> are you going to knight me? For me, this was a, this was a dream for 10 years and so we can fish together. I really want you to stay like this forever. A really, really good man. Thank you very much for being here. We're fishing together. Okay. This is a small present for me. And I'm pretty sure you're going to remember me from this all the time. If, if you don't lose it. Yeah. Oh wow, look mm -hmm. at this. Mm -hmm. Look at this. <laughs> I gotta come here more. I don't get this anywhere else. <laughs> Harry. <laughs> oh, look at this. Yes. <laughs> I got myself a carpy necklace. L M. No. Ah, this. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. Matt. <laughs> Mate, you're an absolute legend. Thank you, thank you. I really, really appreciate that. Oh, look at that. Mate, thank you. Thank you. What, cheers. What's it? Aye, aye, cheers. Thank uh, you. Uh, 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 thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank Nearly. Oh, wow. Thank you, thank you. Look at that. That's amazing. <laughs> it's got a bit of weight I, to I it. I really as well, hope you like it. It's a big fish. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 30 kilo plus. <laughs> yeah, absolutely love that. Oh, so much. thank you. <laughs> Honestly, thank you. Top man. Thank you very much. Thank you. You thank are a very good man. Thank you. No, that is amazing. You don't get this back at home, do you? Well, they're hardly that big at home. <laughs> 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 Wicked. No, oh, thank you, man. Love that. Thank you, thank you. Look at Fish it perfectly. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Thank <laughs> Top man. Eganishim. Eganishigadre. Eganishigadre. 
Egészségedre. Should be just cheers. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny you're running like Jack Sparrow. <laughs> you can't help but giggle on your way down. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nah, go. Let's go. Oh, he's pulling back. Oh, he is pulling back. <laughs> Let's go, son. All three of us in a boat. This is going to be epic. <laughs> oh, wicked. Okay, right. So the same rod that went this morning Menu plan has gone and again. We have to go by boat. This feels like a good one. So let's go oh, by boat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Right, let me zip my pockets up before oh, I yeah. leave my life out of my pockets. That's a good idea. <laughs> okay. Right, I'll go underneath this rod. Oh no, the little common. <laughs> oh no. no. Oh, so we had a proper bite. We had a proper bite and thinking, oh, this is going to be a big one, this is going to be a big one. And, uh, he's big, he's, he's, big. <laughs> he's bigger than the last one, so they are only getting bigger. But we're waiting, we're waiting for that Thursday moment. Right, let's get him in a minute. Come here, son. He's in. <laughs> oh, no, wicked, no, no. wicked, wicked. Okay, right, let's have a look at him. So he's not the biggest in the world, but he is bigger than the one we had this morning, which is very, very cool from a place like this. Look at that. How oh, bollocks are ganging out his chops. There we go. They're getting bigger with every bite. There is a monster out there somewhere and a proper dream maker, I'm sure. Lovely car. Amazing. Huh? Let's get this rod re -drop. Oh. People have asked for my signature every now and then and, and in all fairness, my signature is absolutely horrendous. It's like the worst signature ever. It's... I've just not very... Berry? Uh, I'm just not very um, literature or very good with writing or English, as you've probably established from me starting this piece. <laughs> um, my girlfriend, she has always practiced her signature because she's like, I'm always going to be famous at some point in my life. And uh, she's always practiced her signature and it's always been very lovely. Um, when I've done shop days uh, with Mark pictures, we, uh, like it tends to be me and Mark that do shop days, his signature is like poetry. Absolutely gorgeous. It's got the little heart thing or kiss he does above his little um, dots and eyes or whatever he has to do on his. And um, my missus has always said to me, practice your signature because there'll be one day someone will maybe ask to have it tattooed on their body. I said, that's never happening. <laughs> that will never ever happen. Well, me man to the right here, me very friendly Hungarian friend has asked for my signature to be tattooed on his body and I've just died. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, no. my moment's come where... <laughs> You would never want my signature on your body. So, as a law, and as 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 what my missus has always told me to do, because your missus is always right, of course. <laughs> I'm I'm going to practice my signature and get it perfect, and um, maybe it will be worthy at some point to be tattooed on my very friendly Hungarian friend. <laughs> and never did I think it would happen here. <laughs> oh, <bloody laughs> hell. She's like, it's gonna happen, someone's gonna say, can you have the signature on that? Never, it's not happening. What are you talking about? I took it to the never know where they can get his signature on my thigh. <laughs> I'm like, shut up. <laughs> I'm just voice note my miss, she's like, told ya. <laughs> They're always right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got three fuck 
We got three cracking up faces. Tell him you have the worst signature known to man and he will never ever get over the shame. See, I practiced mine for 13 years. I knew I could end up being famous, so I'm up there now with the Beyonce and Madonna. Should have taken a leaf out of my book. <laughs> the boys put down the bloody gin and rethink this. The boys should put down the gin and rethink this. <laughs> it's almost gone, so we have to. If it was me, though, I'd just do it for the crack and only. You live once. Uh, my signature is so bloody horrible. Mm -hmm. uh, this, mm -hmm. There's so much pressure on it. Are you really going to get this done? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the moment of the truth. Ah. As good and... Uh, what? What? Live. What do you want? What, what do you want? Um, he wants a heart. A right. Small heart. Okay, heart. I'll do it above the eye. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ready? Ah, uh, no, 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 mm. no, no. Right. I'll bin. I'll bin that heart off. I'll put the heart over here. Okay. Mhm. Mm yeah. This should there. be the heart, and not that. And so not that one. Cool. So I'll scribble that one out. Oh my man. <laughs> <laughs> ah, goulash. So the original plan was obviously for me to stay for four nights, but I just wanted to somehow squeeze in another night. So we managed to change my flight so that I'd be leaving on the Saturday instead of the Friday. I'm not going home. I'm not leaving. <laughs> we all know that film. I am hoping to stay another night because the weather is gonna get better as, as the rest of this week goes on. And we've changed it to Saturday now. So I've now got five nights on the venue. So in the hope that the weather that we were hoping for on Thursday has now been prolonged to Friday. So that is why we've booked an extra day so that we can have another day on this place in the hope that a giant turns up.
How do you like our most traditional oh, absolutely soup ever? Lovely, absolutely gorgeous. Oh, the flavouring is just insane. Oh, I'm not talking anymore because I'm enjoying this. <laughs> Right, there we go, change flight. So that's paid. I have now paid to stay here another day. <laughs> Taking on a challenge like Lake Balaton, obviously if you can have an extra day here and the boss man, Harry, has accepted me staying another day, that's what we're gonna do. So it was all looking towards Thursday being the fact that there was big winds coming in, big weather coming in, and I felt like that was gonna be the point that I was waiting for throughout the whole of this trip. But that's now been pushed to Friday, which is why I've now pushed my flight to Saturday. So the longer we can have here, the better the chances of something special happening. So Jemmy's just gone out to drop one of his rods. It's late at night, there's massive waves out there and getting the rods out at this time of night is hard enough in itself. But when you bring this into the equation, now this isn't Jemmy's, he found this out in the lake. So he's dropped one of his rods. He's gone to come back to the bank and notice that there's loads and loads of mono around the boat. So he's had to pick his rod back up, collect all of this. Look at it. There's, there, there must be. Look, there's more on the. There's more on the deck. There must be 500 yards of mono here, still with a live rig and a lead out in the pond. And this is the sort of things that you have to deal with, I guess, at Lake Balaton. I'm glad it didn't happen to me, let me tell you. Get that man a Jägermeister so he can drop that rod back out, let me tell you. Wow, unbelievable. I've never seen anything like that ever. <sighs> like that, look at me hands, shaking. That was horrible, so. There, on Lake Balaton you have this uh, sort of reflective light system where you're not allowed out on the pond if it blinks red. Now, I'm colourblind, so I would never know whether that's red, orange, green, purple, blue, whatever, but it, it pulsates the light. So if it blinks three times, you're not allowed out there. So at the minute it's blinking twice. So it's very close to not being able to go out there. I hated it. The minute that boat starts going like this, I'm like, oh no, take me back, take me back. My man's just sat in the boat here, loving life. He's like, oh, no, I love it. I'm like, I don't. Oh, it was horrendous. I don't want to go back out there again. No, thanks. <laughs> You can download this app which tells you whether you're allowed to go out into the lake or not and from when I dropped my rod earlier on this morning, uh, minutes after, you weren't allowed back out onto the lake. So now we've got, I think that's, I'm colourblind, so, uh, <laughs> so I think that's yellow. So yellow means now you're okay to go out onto the lake. But what I was asking is, do you ever get moments where you have that part of the lake you can go out and that part of the lake you can uh, 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 you can't go out sort of thing because it's obviously 49 miles long it's a long distance and storms are very sort of congregated in some of these areas and that has been the case here before which is just such a cool way of doing it i've never experienced or heard an anything like this on a lake before but i guess with a lake as big as lake balaton then having something like this pretty much saves people's lives because I know this crazy man would have gone out there whilst that <laughs> storm was going on and they're telling him he can't. So I love things like this. It just makes more, I don't know, I don't know what the right word is. It just, uh, just makes it more interesting, I guess, for fishing a place like Balaton.
So uh, we've just been looking on Facebook to see how the rest of the lake's doing and we've come across a fish that's been caught only a couple of miles away. Now I say only a couple of miles, many people must think, well two miles is a long way, but at a place like this, a couple of miles is just down the margin. So uh, the guys that are just down the bank from us have um, managed a 30 pounder, which at the moment would absolutely be perfect for what we're waiting for at the minute. And uh, I'm just in awe of this picture at the moment because that is an absolute dream maker, definitely. That's his ringtone. That's not my rods, unfortunately. How nice would that have been? <laughs> Staying that extra night was definitely worth it because we actually got that bite we were hoping for. <laughs> oh man, it's happening. <laughs> ba -bum, ba -bum, ba. <laughs> oh my God. The right hander has absolutely busted off in this crazy wind that we've got here. So we're not allowed on the pond. I've got three 26 mil hook baits on this. So for it to bust off in this wind, we put a load of bait out there yesterday, which you would have seen. Now, is this our moment? Is this what we've been waiting for? Wow, God, I hope I can get this one in. I really do. My heart is going 10 to the dozen at the minute. <laughs> My mouth is so dry. I've never <laughs> ever wanted to land a fish so much in all my life, honestly. The, the trip started off so well, so well. You know, a couple of bites. There's a lot of small fish that are in Balaton. So I fished with what you would probably call at Lake Balaton small fish tactics, where I just used two 20, no, two 18 mil hook baits, managed to get a couple of bites, felt my way in. But then I did the Balaton thing. I put big, big hook baits on. I went a long way, the furthest I've ever fished in my life before. We can't go out onto the lake because of these crazy winds we've got here. And now I'm playing what could quite possibly be the most important carp of my life. Honestly, I'm absolutely bricking it. It's frowned upon to lose your leads in Hungary and at Lake Balaton. So I've stuck with that. You know, I've got two six ounce leads that are attached to each other. And now I'm wishing, I wish I'd just fall off. But that's not going to happen because I wanted to stick with the rules and stick with the way that they fish out here. But now I'm just hoping and praying that whatever's on the end of this rod, which feels like a massive carp, ends up in my net. Please, Balaton, please, please be kind to me. No. 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 No, 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 no. He's come off. Oh, yeah. He's come off. He's come off. Where has he? Oh, he's so far out, I can't tell what he's doing. Come on. Please be on, please. So I'm not sure what's happened here, but I felt a big kick and then it's all sort of come loose. I'm really scared that he's fallen off. But at such a distance, you don't know what you're doing. You don't, ah, oh, please tell me he's not fallen off, please.
Oh, uh -huh. no, I felt something then. I felt something then. I felt something. No, I think he's still on. I think he's still on. Oh, my God. This is playing with my emotions too much. I'm just... So the fish is just in front of us here on the marginal shelf. So we're just going out just to get him off the shelf here. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, man. Oh, we got him. I thought he was going to be bigger than that, mm -hmm. just crazy. God, what a hard fighting carp, wow. For the size of him, incredible. Oh. Oh. That was one of the most nerve wracking battles I've ever had in my life. And do you know what? The buzz doesn't change, does it? Okay. This could have been twice the size, but the buzz was still exactly the same, whether it's big or small. I am absolutely <laughs> buzzing with that one. Oh, we had all the dramas. It wiped the other rod out. We thought it was a giant, and then it got caught on the shelf in front. So we just went out in the boat to net him, but oh, do you know what? I'm absolutely made up with that. It might not be the biggest fish I've ever caught, but it's definitely one that's meant the most from such a vast amount of water. You cannot be happy with that. If I stop being as buzzing as I am catching fish like this, especially from a place like this, then I should hang my rods up because that is an absolute awesome one. Over the moon. Jump in, son. Keen. <laughs> that is what we're talking oh, about. Good job. Yes. <laughs> Wicked. Even though I fish of that size, my heart rate was absolutely through the roof. I would go as far as saying that that fish meant as much to me as that 71 pounder that I had out of Rainbow all them years ago. <laughs> Amazing, cheers, thank you. Well, am I glad that we booked my flight for tomorrow because by now I would have been on the road and heading home. So managed to book another night in the hope of something like that happening. And okay, might be, not be the biggest fish in the world, but do you know what? I just, it still gets the heart racing. I'm absolutely buzzing that we've managed to get that one. So I'm just gonna get the rods ready now because there's gonna be a lull in the wind at around about six o'clock, which is in about two hours time. So I'm hoping that I'm gonna be able to re-drop these rods ready for tomorrow morning's action. Fingers crossed we can get another bite before we have to head home. Bon appétit. Bon appétit. Bon appétit. Oh, wow. Mm. When it comes to fishing places like this, you only ever get sometimes them small opportunities to actually make it happen. The last drop. Well, we've got an hour window to get these rods re-dropped, so this is our last ditched hope of getting another bite from Lake Balaton. 
if we get a bite, if we don't get a bite, doesn't really matter because I've had the best time ever, let me tell you. But now I'm about to go on another crazy adventure with this crazy man <laughs> out in that pond because it's literally just changed the last 10 seconds that we're allowed out in the pond. But it still looks scary. So let's go. <laughs> <laughs> My man back here, he's like that. He's like, do, 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 do. Lovely, lovely times. <laughs> This is meant. Ah, this is very good. Very good. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect timing, really, to get these rods dropped out, isn't it? We got lucky here, really. Yeah. Just a small window. Yeah, a tiny window just for the last day and all that, because we've not had any of this, really, have we, for the whole trip? So for, for us to get lucky like this, just to get the rods out for the last night is special. Wow! Oh, God! This is... I don't like it! I don't like it! <laughs> so we've dropped the rods out and we only had that tiny window of dropping the rods out so I got very lucky of putting the rods out because you're not allowed back out into the pond now and um, even though it seems very calm here <laughs> we've just had a couple of bleeps on the right hander so I'm just wondering whether we may have a fish on because To the right, we ended up taking a bit of a white, so we come in to the right hand side, so and we've had a couple of bleeps off of it. So I'm just wondering if something might be on the end. This is why it's good having them line biters on because now I can watch the line bite. If that starts bouncing up and down, then the likelihood is there's something on the end. Here we go. Oh so it's dropping back. That's all. That's what dropping, isn't it? Can you see that? Yeah, that is dropping, isn't it? Yeah, look, he's dropping. Oh, right, okay, we're going back out there on the last night. Got a new rig tied. <laughs> <laughs> right, we go. <laughs> the lights are only blipping twice, which means we're allowed back out into the pond. I've had a drop back on the right hand rod, so we're going out there. I've retied a rig, which is right there. So, <laughs> oh, shut. So Listen, I'm being, oh, so I'm so being so the professional. So you were just looking at it like I you want to lick it. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> row, 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 de boat. Gently out the balaton. <laughs> Never before have I ever caught a fish like this. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. No, oh, I'm an Englishman. I'm a legal Englishman. I'm an Englishman in balaton. One more, please. I'm an alien. I'm a legal alien. I'm an English man in Balaton. I can't believe there's a carp on the end of this. Oh wow. So we've come out <laughs> hundreds and way hundreds of yards. And um, we're playing one. We're playing one. We're just like, it's so tranquil out here. We're hundreds of yards out in the pond and we're playing a fish in 148,000 acres. That, that just, life doesn't get much better than this. It really doesn't. It doesn't matter how big they are when you're playing. Oh, a fish like this, 
and so many acres. The buzz is always alive and oh, my heart is pounding, absolutely pounding as I'm playing this fish. The furthest I've ever played a carp way in my lifetime before. And uh, my mouth's dry. I'm trying to give you all the emotions that I'm going through at the minute and my Hungarian friend, Sherby, is about to net. <laughs> He's got him in the net. Ah, <sighs> just... <sighs> There's no better buzz. There really isn't no better buzz. This is just absolutely <laughs> amazing. There's no better buzz quite like it and if you've got the opportunity to come out to a lot a place like this then take that opportunity because honestly it doesn't matter how big they are when you're playing a carp like that in the masses of acres that this place has then honestly there's no better feeling than that trust me <laughs> yes boys right let's get this rod re-dropped <laughs> Oh, wicked. Absolutely bloody wicked. Okay, so I've changed. So just before I drop this rod back out after landing that one, I've changed from the, it's now gonna be called natural splice. I might've got that right. I might've got it wrong, but it was basically the camo splice that we used to use. That's what I use for my bollocks rigs, but it's a very, sort of supple braid, but where we had them big winds, I wanted to use a fluorocarbon that when the winds come, it would always kick out from itself. So I've changed to a 30 pound rigidity, rigidity, there's a word for you. 322 mil SLK boilies, size two, wide gate beaked hook, fish there like German style on a running rig system. So that's what's doing the do. You've got these lights that are all the way round the pond and now they're blinking to tell us that we're not allowed out on the pond. So it's like a mill pond at the minute. So we're obviously in the eye of the storm at the moment because as I look round the pond, all the lights are blinking to tell us to get off the pond. So I need to stop waffling, drop this, get out of here before all hell happens because that is what is coming if them lights are blinking the way that they are right now. So. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one more. <laughs> <laughs> We can't go back out there now, can we? No. That's it, isn't it? No. Oh, it's, it's, this, is, this is Lake Balaton fishing because it's calm here. Look, look, you can see in the reeds, maybe you might be able to see in the reeds no. behind me that they're not moving and it's very calm in the swim, but we're not allowed out in the pond, so, ah. Oh. I've had a similar bite to what I had on the right hander. <sighs> Only 20, 30 minutes ago. But the risk is if I pick this rod up, I can't re drop it if there's nothing on the end. <sighs> so I'm in a massive dilemma here. I have to know that there is a carp on the end of this rod. This is a whole new dimension on carp angling because if you get three bleeps on a rod that is many, many yards out in the pond, then you pick it up and if there's nothing on the end, you go and redrop it. Well, that's not the case. If I pick this rod up, this might be the last, last chance that this rod ends up in the water. So. I really don't want to take the risk of, maybe it was a swan passing for it. There's so many different things that could have made the rod go off. And again, this is the problem with not being in front of the swim because if I was here, which like back at home, my bivvy would be set up just behind my rod. So the minute you get a bleep, you put your head torch on, you know whether it's a swan or whether it's, you know, 
uh, a weed bed moving through or whether it's the reeds moving through, which I've seen all day today. So it's a whole, no a whole new dynamic on, uh, on fishing abroad because I've never had this before, I've never, never had this before. We always get used to seeing these types of films and you always pretty much end with a monster or they start with a monster, but sometimes that's just not what the adventure's about. And it's the people that you've got there, it's the settings that you've got that really, I feel, make for a film like this, which will give me memories to last a lifetime. Well, that's it. The trip is officially over now. Last thing to do, which is reel these rods in for the very last time. On here this year anyway, but I'll be back. <laughs> When you're spending quality time with the loveliest of peoples, time just flies by so quickly, you know, before you know it, the trip is over and I'm absolutely gutted that once we've done this piece, I've got a head home. I'm so happy that I've had this opportunity to fish Lake Balaton and I'm really happy with how this film has come out and now I've got my own memories which will always last a lifetime. Yeah.